Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Hey everyone, welcome to The Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new here, my name is Leslie. I am The Farm and Pastor's Wife. You're actually in my home down on the farm. And yes, I am in the Christmas spirit today. So anyway, if you're new, I'd love for you to hit subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. I upload content, mainly cooking, but the, a lot of day in the light when things get busy and I'm not doing cooking, which happens a lot. Um, we do day in the life of grocery haul, shopping hauls, um, taking you with me, whatever we're doing. Um, I just bring you guys along for us. So, and we are gearing up, getting ready for Vlogmas. And if you're unfamiliar with what Vlogmas is, it's where I bring you every single day and I just take you with me throughout my day, give you clips of what I'm doing and um, just share with you through Thanksgiving to the end of Christmas. And we just spend that time together. You stay with me every single day. Day. Uh, everybody's asked they're excited about vlogmas coming back and I'm super excited so with that being said it is 30 degrees outside it was in the 80s last week like just three days ago it was in the 80s and we it is 30 degrees right now it was 29 when I got up this morning it uh, today is supposed to get around 50 I think so the day should end up pretty comfortable, but y'all know how cold I am. If you're if you're with me, and first of all, you guys know how much I love you, and you know how cold I stay. So first, I want to always share with you what lipstick, because I always get asked. And of course, again, it is my favorite Revlon with the black tube and the gold band. Uh, it is Revlon. This is a very moisturizing. It doesn't stay. You do have to reapply but I don't like the dry feeling that some of the lipsticks give me. And so I wear this, but this color is blushed. This is the one I wear when I'm just kind of wanting a, a soft makeup look. Um, my normal go-to 90% of the time is plum baby, but not today. All right, let me back the camera up. I'll show you the outfit of the day and then I'll tell you what we're gonna do in this video. So stay tuned, let me back the camera up. Okay, so the outfit of the day is these uh, embroidered jeans, which I believe they came out of Stitch Fix. You guys were the ones that said, you gotta get those jeans, so I did. And they are embroidered uh, on both sides and down at the leg, on this leg, <laughs> embroidered up here on this one. The shirt is just a sweatshirt I bought at Sam's in the summertime, like late summer, as they were starting to get in their warmer things. I bought like three of these sweatshirts and I super like them because I love anything feminine about sleeves and stuff and I like to be comfortable. So um, this was super comfortable and I think it's got a feminine touch because of the ruffle up here and of course the, I love anything anything cute around the sleeves <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> i have no idea why and where that came from i don't know but anyway that's what i'm wearing today i've just got on some brown shoes brown little drop earrings to bring in the shoes <laughs> to make them go with something but um a cross necklace that my mama gave me and that's about it so this is what we're going to make today i'm going to make congo bars and um I don't know where it got its name, but I found it in one of the recipe books that I got out of the box that I bought at the auction. We went through that box the other day, so you can go back to that video and check it out. But I found um, this, I was looking for those pecan bars that I thought, I said, oh, I need to make those. I was looking for those 
and I came across these Congo bars. So we're going to make that. We're going to head to the grocery store first. I need a few things for the Congo bars and I need a few things for supper. So we're going to run to the grocery store. I'm also going to finish up my Hobby Lobby shopping, Christmas shopping, but I will share that on tomorrow's video. I will share our supper and um, the Hobby Lobby shopping haul, two day shopping haul, because I've already been one day and um, we're going again today. So I'll share that on tomorrow's video. Today is going to be the Congo bars and we'll go to the grocery store. So, all right, I'm going to find a coat because it's really cold. <laughs> I went outside to get my lipstick because I'd left it in the car and burr, it's cold. And so let's head out to the grocery store, get the things we need for this and other things I need. And I'll see you when we go. I've got to run by the farm real quick and get, grab all the feed tickets and put the feed tickets in. So I'm not sure if I'll do that before or after, but come on, you just go with me. So if you've missed previous videos, if this is new to you, <clears throat> my husband and I are uh, commercial poultry farmers. We have an organic farm where our chicken is sold at Costco uh, in their organic, under their organic label. So we have organic feed, organic shavings, everything around here that has to do with the chickens is organic. Um, so we also keep up with the amount of feed that is brought here. And up to date, <laughs> up, 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 not to date, but up, the last entry I made, we had 464,000 pounds of feed delivered. So, um, I have a bunch of tickets to put in. So, I mean a bunch of tickets. So, I'm going to put those in and then I'll tell you where we stand and what day of the flop we're on or that the last feed was delivered. So, we, don't, we keep our birds like six to seven weeks, usually around seven weeks. And um, so we're getting kind of towards the end of this flock. Um, <clears throat> and so we'll, I'll give you a grand total where we stand on our feed and um, what day we're on.
So, our grand total as of day 31, we have had 834,680 pounds of feed delivered. So, um, we will definitely surpass the million mark. Um, and, yeah, so we're at day 31. We keep them for about 49. So, we're on the, the last, getting close to the last half or last end of the chickens. So, um, we'll be out for Thanksgiving, which is makes me so happy. If we had realized it ahead of time, I have always wanted to have Thanksgiving in a cabin in the mountains. And if we had realized it well enough in advance that, you know, I felt like the kids could get off their jobs and so forth, um, we would have planned that. So I guess that we'll just look forward to the next time we're out around Thanksgiving and who knows that may never happen. <laughs> but I am going to have Thanksgiving in a cabin one day. Hey everyone, we're going into our local grocery store here. It's Food Line, and I'm going to go in here and get a few things I need. So we are back, and I wanted to get started on our um, Congo, Conga, Congo, Congo bars, I think. And yes, Congo bars. And we're home from our grocery haul. So I wanted to show that to you real quick because I want to get these bars made and then I want to get to decorating for Christmas. So, all right, let me turn the camera around and show you what we got. Okay, here it is. So um, let's start on this side. Um, I've got some mozzarella cheese, two of those, just because we use a lot of that. I've got some Parmesan I, and actually the mozzarella too. The recipe I'm going to do probably Friday night, our supper for Friday night, is going to be a shrimp and crab pasta dish that calls for mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. So we're going to um, use that. I also picked up one of these. I love these. I love these with sauerkraut. I love to just slice them up, stick them in the air fryer. Love them. So um, pick that up. I also got some Nisa's hot sausage. I am in a big breakfast meat season right now. I'm eating lots of bacon and lots of sausage. And um, I got the family pack of bacon just because we're eating a lot of bacon. Okay, so those of you who may or may not know, Bryant's birthday is Sunday and he turns 50 and he's wanting to have a family meal here to, that night. So, uh, I think I'm going to do stew beef. I did not buy the meat today because I wasn't sure that's what he wanted. I didn't know. He mentioned a roast. He mentioned stew beef. And, and I know he loves cube steak. So, I wanted to wait and see exactly what he wanted before I purchased the meat. But I know as a family, we'll have green beans as a side. So, I went ahead and got the green beans. I also picked up some red food coloring um, because... I have a recipe that calls for that. <laughs> um, and that'll probably be next week sometime. Okay, eggs. I got 18 large eggs. We eat, go through a lot of eggs, and so we need them. Okay, so today my recipe does call for brown sugar and quite a bit of brown sugar. Um, how I, and I probably have enough, but here we are getting ready to go into the baking season, and it doesn't hurt me to have extra brown sugar so this will be the first of many packs of brown sugar i buy in fact i need to go to sam's and get that great big bag of brown sugar um we are love sodas um i know they're not the best for you but it's better than the real sodas so we're doing diet sodas he likes diet pepsi i am in love with the cherry dr pepper zero love it um, that when I do the crab and shrimp pasta, um, it does call for sun-dried tomatoes, so I'll be putting that in as well. And I want to have a salad with it, so we're going to do a salad. Um, so I got some salad ingredients. Um, today's recipe, the Congo bars uh, call for pecans and they call for um, chocolate chips. A more salad stuff here, there, croutons. Uh, I had some homemade dressing, but I wasn't sure I had enough, so I picked that up. And I want to make my crusty bread, so I didn't want, uh, you know, if I can cut something out making 
and I thought the ranch dressing is something I could cut out. Um, I've got some croutons and milk because I want to make um, some crock pot hot chocolate. So we may do that today along with the Congo bars. I'm not sure. It depends on the time frame. So not everything has come to room temperature like it should have. So I thought, let's go ahead and make the hot chocolate. It is a cold day. There are fellas out working in the cold here, so they will be thrilled to come in and get some hot chocolate. So let me tell you, I saw this recipe just the other day on another YouTuber's channel. So this is not my invention. <laughs> I saw this over at Tiffany's channel on, I think it is Charlotte Grove Farmhouse or something like that. I will try to find it and link her video to, down below. She is the cutest thing ever. And she does a lot of home resets, you know, cleaning and decorating. And she's just cute as a button. So they have five children. So I'll try to link her, at least her channel, if not her video to this particular recipe. So, but we're going to try it today. I've never done this. I have got a homemade hot chocolate recipe, but it's a powdered mix. This is not powdered. So the first thing we're going to start with is two cups of chocolate chips. And this can be done right in your crock pot. Okay. So there's one. I knew I should have got a bigger bag. <laughs> and there's two. <clears throat> then we're going to add six cups of milk. This is four cups right here. I'll have to add two more. Two cups of milk two more so a total of six and whole milk i would think would be the best she that's what she particularly uses and i imagine that would be the best um, then you're going to use a cup and a half of heavy cream i have the perfect amount now let me tell y'all I clean out my heavy cream because that that's a lot of good thick wonderful creamy deliciousness being left in that container if you don't scrape it out so be sure to scrape it out all right now we're going to go in with a, a teaspoon teaspoon and a half of vanilla tablespoon whatever you prefer and oh <laughs> my husband would say this is the best part a can of sweetened condensed milk. And again, I say scrape that goodness out. It is super thick in the bottom. Gracious. Okay, it was thick down in the bottom. All right, so we're going to turn this on high just for a minute, not long. You don't want to leave this on high long at all because you, want, um, you don't want anything to burn. So we're going to turn it on high just to get it like warm, get started warming. And then we're going to turn it to low pretty quickly. And then just let it melt, stirring it every few minutes. We're going to come and stir it because that chocolate will settle to the bottom. And I'm going to leave this can right here with the spatulas in it. I'm going to grab the lid and we'll get started now on our Congo bars. So let's get started on these Congo Congo. I just splattered vanilla flavor in all of my glasses um, bars. Let me tell you what recipe book this is coming out of. This is coming out of Hoover's Grove Wesleyan. If you remember when I went through the box of cookbooks, this one was in there and I shared a story that Bryant has actually preached revival here two years in a row. 
And um, so let me tell you, this recipe comes from Cindy Hunt. So, okay, guys, at any of my Hoover's Groves people that may watch my channel, listen, if you know who Cindy Hunt is, tell her I'm doing her recipe on YouTube. So, okay. So the first thing we have is two, I, I'm looking at the recipe just to be sure I did it right, two and three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour. Now, it says to sift it, and I never sift. The reason I never sift is because I have these double whisk, and I go through so much flour, my flour is usually pretty fresh. Um, if it was an older flour and it had a lot of lumps in it, then I would sift it, but um, this double whisk really gets out any lumps really well, and so... I don't usually sift any flour. Okay, now to our flour, we're gonna sift in with our whisk. Um, let me check my recipe. Two and a half teaspoons, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. I wanted to be sure it was powder and not soda. So there's one. and I don't have you turned down where you can see what I'm doing <laughs> and a half hang on I'll get you guys turned down all right sorry I know y'all were screaming at the TV okay and I'm just gonna whisk this around with my with my whisk now, if you're not using salted butter, here's where you would add some salt. I am using salted butter, so I do not add the salt. Okay, so we're just going to set that aside real quick. And we're going to move over here to this bowl. I hope this bowl is going to be big enough. We shall see. Okay, the recipe calls, it's an odd amount of, of butter, but it calls for two-thirds cup. So right here is a third of a cup, which is about five and a half tablespoons. So instead of me cutting both of those, I'm just going to count up 11 tablespoons. And that way I don't have two half sticks sticking in the refrigerator door. So that was eight, nine, 10, 11. So we want three there. There we go. All right. Now we'll set that back and we'll use it tonight for supper. Okay, so to this, we're going to add two and a half, nope, nope, two and a fourth cups of brown sugar. And I packed my brown sugar, so there's one. Two and a fourth. Okay, so I'm just going to use my hand mixer. I'm not going to get out my stand mixer today. We're going to go through this the old fashioned way. Well, actually, the old fashioned way is with elbow grease, but, um, My elbows don't have enough grease <laughs> today. So we're gonna use this hand mixer. Okay, we're gonna add three eggs one at a time.
Okay, I'm going to give the bowl a scrape just to be sure we have everything mixed together. We still have more to add. That's totally fine. All right, so we're going to start adding in our flour and do just a little bit. Was doing that left-handed that was not easy okay so before I over mix it which is what I don't want to do I'm going to be sure everything is scraped off this spoon. I'm going to go ahead now and pour in our vanilla flavoring. I'm going to measure in a cup of chopped pecans. Maybe maybe and six ounces which is what I have left of my chocolate chips and we're gonna finish mixing that up Let's give this almost a final whisk, uh, mix because I do want to scrape it one more time. All right. Now I'm going to take my spoon and just go down to the bottom and scrape up. I just want to be sure I'm getting everything mixed in together. Okay. All right, let me scrape this off and we'll give it one more mix and then we'll be done. You never want to overmix once you add the flour because then it can create a toughness. But that's why I did a little bits at a time. Okay, one last spin. Okay, very good. I'm gonna stick my beaters over here in the sink. All right, I just sprayed um, this nine by 13 dish. And it says, bake at 350, so I'm assuming we just spread this out the best we can. It is a very sticky, sticky dough. I'm curious as to why they were named Congo bars. And I threw that spatula in the... I mean, I, it's, this is like a decadent chocolate chip cookie. I mean, yeah. So I am super duper excited. 
the boys can run over here tonight and get them a nice little dessert. All right, and I'm just going to spread this out. I think this pan's a 9 by 13, but I could be wrong. But that's what size pan you're supposed to use. So, like I said, it may not be. All my clear Pyrex dishes that are definitely 9 by 13s, I can't find. I've obviously left them places, probably at church. Or at Caroline's. In fact, I would not be surprised at all to find out I had left one over at Caroline's. Or Isaac may have taken something home in one. Don't know. Okay. Well, that looks super good to me. So here are the Congo bars going in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. So we're going to let this bake. I'll see you when they come out. Let's give our hot chocolate a check. We're not going to taste it yet. I just want to check on it. I've been stirring it and uh, need, it's time to stir it again. Doesn't that look delicious? All right. We're just going to let it get good and hot. Okay, everyone, the timer just went off, so let's give these bars a check. You can see all my fall stuff I've gathered in and there on the dining room table. Wow. I don't think they're done because they wiggled a little bit. So my pan may have been smaller than a nine by 13, slightly smaller. So we're gonna leave them in there for a little bit longer. I don't know how much longer, maybe 10 minutes. So they're out of the oven. We're gonna let them cool right here, but they look absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to try them. Um, my hot chocolate is looking delicious. It's just needing to get hot. Um, I'm wondering if I need to add some more heavy cream, but then that'll cool it down and I'm trying to get it hot. Everything's melted, but we'll see. Well, guys, I'm sorry to tell you, but Mr. Bryant will not be joining us for the taste test for two reasons. And I'm glad about one. One, I get to do the, I'm actually glad about both reasons. <laughs> I get to do the taste test, so that's good. The second thing is he has been out spreading chicken litter for people who have uh, requested chicken litter and, um, um, he's covered from head to toe and I just soon him not be in my kitchen when he's covered with from head to toe with chicken litter. <laughs> so I'm going to do the taste test and keep him out of my kitchen. But does that not look delicious? I cannot wait to dig in. Mmm. Ma'am. Some kind of good. Mm-hmm. I'll move that so I'm not so loud swallowing and chewing. Oh my. That's really good. Really good. All right. Let's give the hot chocolate a try. What do you say? I have a couple of family members who think because I'm ready to Christmas decorate um, that I'm skipping Thanksgiving. 
I'm not skipping Thanksgiving. I have my thankful cup. In fact, it's out all year round. <laughs> so, let's check out this hot chocolate. Okay, let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> All it needs is a marshmallow. That is super good. That is so good. Okay, I'll stop drinking now. Oh man, that's good. Chocolatey rush. That is for sure. But yet creamy and decadent and delicious. So, okay, I'm going to end this video here so I can get it out to you. Listen to me. You do not want to miss tomorrow's video. You don't want to miss it. First, you're going to hang with me while I make uh, our supper tonight. Our supper tonight is going to be on tomorrow's video. But... I think I am coming home with the biggest Hobby Lobby haul I have ever, ever done. And I mean, now I'm, I don't do like, I've just recently started decorating for fall. I've never decorated for fall ever until two or three years ago. So, <laughs> and now I'm wanting to change my Christmas tree up. So I'm going to, you're just going to see it and it's going to it's a huge haul so the food is going to be first our supper tonight will be on first on tomorrow's video but then you've got to just stay tuned and see my hobby lobby haul it's a doozy it's a doozy okay all right so and thank goodness thank goodness i went on the 50 percent off sale week of the christmas stuff whoop, whoop. yay me and I really didn't spend that much. I just bought an awful lot. I didn't, I mean, my, my cost was good. I had a budget, stayed within that budget. And uh, so I'm super excited. Okay, I'm gonna hang up, I'm gonna hang up. <laughs> that went like way old school, way old school. Like hang up the phone that none of us have anymore on the wall with the long cord, you know, okay. I'm going to say goodbye now. The chocolate's gone to my head. And I will see you guys next time tomorrow on the Farm and Pastor's Wife where we're going to you're going to join me for our supper tonight and then a huge Hobby Lobby haul. I hope you enjoyed the Crock-Pot hot chocolate and these Congo bars. Oh my goodness, they are so good. Okay. I will see you guys next time on the next video. And until then, remember, the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.